Hello and welcome to Tats Plus. My name is Martin Perhiniak. In this episode of the digital publishing series, I'm going to show you how to work with scrollable frame folio overlays. We already discussed most of the overlays in previous episodes, but I'm going to spend the whole tutorial explaining how to work with this specific feature called scrollable frame, which is all the way here at the bottom of the folio overlays panel. This is a little bit more complicated to use and uh, the reason for that is because it's much more versatile as well than all the other overlay options. So with this one you can actually create an overlay which can have more folio overlays inside it. So let me show you how it works. First of all you can create a very simple interaction where you have text but you don't want to show all the text at once you would like to create a frame for it so this text here can be maybe made a little bit less I mean the frame itself can be smaller and uh, maybe we can change the columns as well the number of columns to just one so something like that and then just make it a little bit longer let's see how much text we have yeah we have actually quite a lot of text here so I can drag this up and have much less uh, area for the text itself and then once I select this I will see that the scrollable frame option is not available when I click on it it will explain to me why it's not available well you have to create a container for your content so instead of using a, a frame like this, you have to first of all create another frame and then paste this uh, text frame into it. So instead of reducing the size of this, I'm going to double click on it at the bottom uh, middle point to have the whole frame ready. And then I'm going to just create an empty frame. So I just draw an empty frame like that. And then I'm going to select this frame here and uh, go to edit, cut, and select the other one and choose edit paste into once I do that you can see it immediately uh, highlights scrollable frame as an available option so this is the trick you have to create an empty frame and then copy or cut and paste into the uh, elements or the contents that you would like to have in that scrollable frame once it's there you can obviously always move it around so clicking on the content grabber tool whichever which always highlights when you hover over a frame so clicking on that and dragging it down you can position it so the top of it uh, is visible and now if I keep this frame selected I can now go into the scrollable frame options and here I can choose the following th options first of all for the scroll direction I can have it auto detect or horizontal vertical or both I'm going to choose auto detect because most of the time step will do a really good job and it will identify where the additional content is uh, outside of the frames boundaries and then here I can also choose to have the content or the initial content position uh, be upper left or use the document position in my case because I already set it up I'm going to use the way it is in the document and that's all really what you need to worry about once everything is set up you can save your document so go to file save and then go into the folio itself so this is the folio we are working on and select article 1 and then drop down update if you are not familiar with the whole folio workflow make sure you check out the previous episodes where I really go into details and explain how to start a new folio, how to work with the folio builder, then how to import all the articles into your folio and uh, then also how to use the folio producer to uh, finalize a folio file. So if you are not familiar with these steps make sure you check out the previous episodes of this series but for now we'll see that what happens once we update this uh, article in our folio because as you can see it's already uploading this article onto the Adobe Cloud so I can check it on my computer or anyone else who uh, has access to my folios so I'm just going back to the article from the articles to the folio and then I can click on preview at the bottom and I will be able to see it in my uh, Adobe content viewer. 
So remember, we were in article number one and we created this for only the portrait version. So I just press Command or Control R to switch to the portrait format. And then I drag to the first article and you can see we already have the scrollable content here. So let me just go back there. If I click on it, I will be able to scroll up and down in this content by just click and drag dragging over it. If I zoom a little bit closer, let me just click on uh, zoom in. You will probably be uh, be able to see it better. Once again, zoom a bit closer. So there's our content. Once I click on it, I can start uh, scrolling into it. Now, this is just a simple text uh, for our scrollable frame, but let me show you what else you can create uh, with a scrollable frame. So it can really add the interactivity or improve the interactivity uh, in your DPS apps. So I'm just going to close Content Viewer, co come back to the same page in uh, the InDesign document, and uh, I'm just going to copy this onto the uh, landscape format of the same document. So here again, I can copy this text in instead of the other one and maybe move things around a bit. So I just drag these up a little bit and uh, I'm going to put this content here. So everything has a good place, position. And then what I'm going to do now is to have three elements which I will be able to scroll or drag into my page from the right. So like little bookmarks here on the right and uh, for that I'm going to create a frame again. I'm just going to use the rectangle frame tool and actually I'm going to use also a color for this. So I'm going to fill it in with a color and uh, let's just choose a, a color from these, maybe this darker color or maybe a brighter one. Yeah, I think this brighter one looks good. And then I click on this uh, option here to edit the corners and then click on one of the corners and drag it into to create that nice rounded corner. Now I can make this even longer, something like that. And then I am going to paste elements into this frame. So I will have to um, add more content to it. And uh, I'm going to use bridge in this case and uh, drag in an image. So I'm just going to drag in this image, which I used for my previous articles in this series. And uh, I'm going to cut this out. So I did cut and use the other frame and paste it into that. So we already have the content in there and we can position it somewhere closer to the end or maybe a little bit further this way. And I can also add a uh, radius on that image. So that's how it looks. And now I just need to add some text here as well. So I'm going to use the type tool and I'm just going to type in links or hyperlinks actually. Let's just type in hyperlinks. And these are actually the other options we have in InDesign to uh, add more interactivity. And I discussed these features in the previous uh, tutorials. So there we have hyperlinks. And I'm just going to uh, rotate this around. So turn it upside down, something like that. Make it a little bit smaller. That's it. And then I just move the image itself a little bit also closer. But this is actually now uh, not inside this frame yet. So I have to also cut it out. And I have to again select this and choose Edit Paste Into. Now the only problem is that I have two elements placed in separately instead of play placing them together. So what I can always do, instead of placing them one by one, is to place them together. So that's the easiest way. I'm just going to cut this out and again bring it out from the, uh, from the frame and select these two together and then go to Edit Cut and paste into this frame. So I'm just going to use paste into, but that's another thing which I wanted to show you. When you have more than one element selected, you won't be able to use the paste into only if they are grouped first. So I want to make sure I cover every possible mistake you can run into or problem you can run into. So I'm going to group them before I cut them. So I go to object, group, or you can use control or command G and then go to edit cut, select this frame and choose edit paste into. 
now it's nicely positioned I just have to place it here on the left and then I can turn this into a scrollable frame but before I do that I am going to just drag it further out so I can only see the hyperlinks uh, tab so I'm going to select this choose scrollable frame and choose scroll direction auto detect and I can use document position so uh, that's all I need to set up and after that I have that ready I can save my document and go back to the articles select article 1 and update so I need to make sure once again this is updated in my folio before we can see how it works and then this will uh, the scrollable frame will work very similarly to the other option we had but here instead of using it for text we use it for a visual element uh, it's like a bookmark which we can drag into our page from the right and then we can also drag it out so this will remember the boundaries of uh, the frame that we created and it will be able to move inside that so that's how it looks it might not work first but I want to show you all the mistakes that you can run into as I mentioned so once it's updated the article we can go back one step to the folio itself and then check the previews see how it works so I'm going to just zoom out once and then I go to the next page so that's my hyperlink but I won't be able to drag it in I can only go to the next uh, article but that's not what I would like to do so let's just go back to our document and see how to set this up properly so instead of having a frame like this we should also put the background into a frame so instead of having the folio overlay on this what I'm going to do is to select uh, the content and take it out put it in here and have the whole thing grouped together and I'm just going to click on reset uh, folio overlay we don't need on this one so I'm just going to select all of these together the whole frame and these elements together group them together and then create another frame an empty frame and with that frame I can specify the area which I would like to use for this uh, scrollable frame I just want to make sure that it uh, is big enough to cover this yeah it's big enough so once it's ready just so I don't confuse you let me show you so that's my empty frame and I have to uh, paste this group into that frame just like we did it with the text we created all the contents and even the background that um, that rounded rectangle background and the text and the image all are put together into a group and then I'm going to cut that out and paste it into this frame so paste into and I can position it the way I want it to and actually I'm going to position it already here on the side so I don't want the image to be visible uh, in the beginning I'm just going to see the hyperlinks part so something like that but remember I kept this frame the original frame the container long enough so it will be able to extend out so the interactive overlay the scrollable frame overlay will be able to show everything that I prepared in this little uh, tab so now I can choose scrollable frame choose uh, auto detect and I can use the document position and in this case I can use to hide the scroll indicators so now once we have everything set up properly we can save this document and do the same procedure again choose article number one and then update this article and now that it's updated I can go back to the folio and choose preview and then we will see it in the Adobe content viewer so this is article number one I just have to make sure I go there article number one and there we have the interactive element the scrollable frame which I can drag in now the only problem is that the actual content is longer than this the, the frame itself so in this case I can drag it further out and then we will see that margin or edge where the container itself ends so that's just another thing you can learn from to make sure that the content is not longer than your frame 
So you can measure them and make sure that it will be exactly the same size as the frame and then it should end up somewhere here where the uh, actual overlay container ends. But now it's working nicely the way I, I wanted to set it up. And the good thing is with these um, scrollable frames is that you can even put video, audio or uh, even any of the other folio overlays inside a scrollable frame. So you can stack up the separate folio overlays on top of each other and that will make it even more interactive. So you can maybe have like hyperlinks and have a couple of real hyperlinks here inside this scrollable uh, frame, but you can even have videos inside it. So there's so many things you can use this scrollable frame feature for and this is probably one of my favorite interactive options for DPS apps. And that's all I wanted to show you in this video. I hope you liked it and I hope you learned some useful things from it. And if you want to learn more about the digital publishing suite, make sure you join me next time as well here on Tats Plus. See you soon.